Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another extremely interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Maxace Peregrine in San Mai, real San Mai uh, ZDP. Uh, that is pretty cool. The price tag on this knife is pretty amazing. Now Maxace is a Chinese OEM. Uh, but they are known for doing some of the most impressive production work on earth. Um, and, uh, you know, their pricing can get a little bit crazy. It depends on what it is. But on this guy, it's really pretty darn impressive. I'm going to link this knife right down below so you guys can check it out if you want to. Thanks so much to Maxace for sending this in for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Um, real quick here. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. So the overall length of the Maxace Peregrine, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not. Uh, it's gonna be about eight inches. Blade length is coming in at three and a half, cutting edge at three and a quarter. Very standard full size, at least in my book, full size knife measurements. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So this guy is not quite the same length as the Rat 1, but definitely larger than the Rat 2. How about up against the uh, Demco AD 20.5? How about up against the Spyderco Para 3 and the Spyderco PM2? Uh, about eh, very, very close. A little bit shorter than the PM2. And last but not least, uh, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bugout. A little more slender in terms of height versus the Ritter Hogue, but same overall length and definitely longer than the Bug Out with a similar height profile, but more thickness. How's the action on this knife? This knife runs on phosphor bronze, making it even more Sabenza-like than it even <laughs> than it looks, right? And I know that's the first thing that everybody thought. It looks like the Sabenza. Definitely. It definitely, definitely does. Now, Let's remember the Sabenza has some of the most traditional and classic knife lines of all time. So the profile is not being copied. This is a drop point blade with a simple handle shape, right? Where I think it gets really close to the Sabenza is the style of inlays on the inlay versions, right? And the fact that we have, um, you know, it just, the pocket clip uh, is, is definitely not the same. I mean, it, the pocket clip honestly looks like the aftermarket, uh, you know, Chris Reeve clips that people will sometimes switch to. Um, and then, you know, the fact that it's only got one stud or stud on one side kind of, you know, leans into it. So there's a bunch of elements here. It's really hard for me to want to scream copy, copy, copy. It's really just like the inlay design is kind of similar and the overall shape, right? Uh, but, and then there's, it's, it's utilizing similar elements. But anyways, Back to the action. It's running on phosphor bronze, which is pretty cool. Initially, I thought, why is this so tight, right, compared to other Maxace knives because they all run on bearings? Uh, that's uh, something that's a little bit easier for me to deal with when we're talking about phosphor bronze. Why? Because phosphor bronze will help keep debris com uh, out of the pivot versus bearings. Not that I really ever have a problem, but there are people who work in environments where excess debris is a problem, and phosphor bronze are going to be the only option for some of those people. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, this will inevitably break in more over time, and it's already doing a pretty good job of it. We don't have fall shut action or anything like that, but deploying it is pretty easy. Honestly, the only thing that bothers me is really just the shape of the thumb stud. After like five or so deployments, it, it kind of starts to dig in to your fingers, which is funny. It's even sharing the uncomfortable deployment element. Sabenza fans trying to pretend that that's not a thing. Come on. The Sabenza has the worst thumb stud in all of existence. Why they chose a rounded pyramid for the stud, I have no idea. This is only slightly better. It should have been wider and fatter. I always, uh, you know, reference the Ontario Rats thumb stud. This is just a good thumb stud, right? This is not comfortable. This is way more comfortable. It's just, it is what it is, right? But okay, fine. As a front flipper, eh, the, the, the action's not really good enough for me to get a um, 
reliable flip every single time. That first one, after I've not picked this thing up for a bit, is always a little bit questionable, and I feel like there's a good chance I'm gonna kind of sli uh, slice myself. So I don't really like it as a front flipper, but if you you know if you pick this up, you'll probably adapt to it, especially if that is like your preferred method of opening your knife. Uh, it looks like you can flip it over to the other side, the thumb stud that is. Can it be uh, removed and flipped over to the other side? Yeah, you would think so, right? Um, even though there's only one spot for a pocket clip and it's set up for right-handed tip up only, you would think you'd be able to switch the uh, thumb stud over. You can't. In fact, I'll show you some pictures because I did it. Uh, the thumb stud, <laughs> you can see there, it's actually below the um, the frame there. So it just sort of sits on top of the frame and it causes the tip of the blade to peek out over the butt of the knife, which is just really extremely stupid. <laughs> like, look, I mean, I always, I say this every time, there should be a mounting position for lefties, even if we have a right-handed frame lock, right? There are ways to get around this. Uh, you know, even if you're one of those people who like, I don't like to look at a big pocket that's cut out uh, so that the pocket clip can be inset for, or, or, or uh, nested for lefties. Um, there are wraparound uh, backspacers, or I'm sorry, wraparound pocket clip styles that clear the frame entirely and go into the butt end. Uh, that's uh, pretty easy to do. And even if we're talking about, you know, it's generally a stamp style clip, There's there are plenty of ways to mill a clip that will act exactly the same way and it cannot be that expensive. So the excuses for this not putting a pocket clip or not setting the knife up for left-handed carry, they're very, they, they've are very they dwindled, right? There's just really, again, there's just really not a, an excuse for it. This situation here, number one, I think it's kind of weird to have a knife where you just have a thumb stud on one side and if you want to, um, you know, open it left-handed or you want it on this side, then you can flip it over. Just put a thumb stud on both sides and... Um, carve out some additional space right here so that it can be accessed. Really weird choice. If you are right-handed and you only ever deploy your knife with your thumb and you never use the rear finger back here, uh, then you'll be fine. Just an odd choice. It's just not very accommodating and it's bizarre, right? I would have thought at least it could be flipped over the other side, but not the case. So there you go for your information. Let's go ahead and talk about um, carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3, really not all that thick, just a little bit thicker than the Para 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Uh, it's a little bit shorter than the PM2, definitely a little longer than the Para 3, nowhere near as tall. Really isn't an issue in the pocket for me. Let's talk about materials. This is ZDP 189, which is, um, that's the same steel that I have on my Rockstead. Holy moly, that is some impressive stuff. When it's heat treated correctly, we're gonna talk more about that. This is the San Mai version. I gotta be honest with you guys, I have no idea what the jacket is on the Hitachi ZDP 189. They offer, they used to offer it just ZDP, and now from what I'm hearing in this month, 2023, the only thing that's available is the San Mai version. When they do this, it adds properties depending on what the jacket is. Uh, sometimes the jacket is meant to add corrosion resistance to a composition that is otherwise lacking. Sometimes it's meant to add a little bit of strength uh, or ductility or whatever. I don't know. I'm not a metallurgist. I don't forge this stuff. Just somebody who reads Google, right? Um, but uh, sometimes it's meant to add both. I don't know. I, I tried to search and figure out what it is that Hitachi uses for their jacket. I don't know if they switch it up every now and then. I, I honestly don't know. I know that the core and the cutting edge is ZDP 189 and whatever the jacket is, it is likely meant to add uh, beneficial properties. So probably at least an, an extra bit of stainlessness, uh, right? An extra bit of corrosion resistance. Uh, depending on where you look on the internet, ZDP 189 is either referred to as a stainless steel or not a stainless steel, but very, very close. It's hard to say because there's a lot of chromium, but there's also a lot of carbon. So where it actually falls, eh, I'm inclined to believe it's kind of like D2. It's pretty darn close, but not quite stainless, right? So the fact that we have a jacket on it makes me think they're adding a little bit of stainlessness, at least to a large portion of the blade, obviously not the direct core that's sticking out, but I don't know, it's hard to say. I just wanna tell you guys what I found. Um, the jacket probably helps it. 
It is very cool, though. It, it looks awesome, and it's it's interesting to process it, or you know, like sand my steel in general. Um, but anyways, we have that, which is not cheap. You guys need to bear that in mind. This is not like a, oh, dum de doo doo let's just have some sand my ZDP. That'll be fun, right? That's in the same caliber as HCR 13 MOV, right? No, it's very, very expensive, definitely. Uh, then we have titanium and we have some uh, carbon fiber inlays that have been very nicely done. We also have a full titanium backspacer, nothing special here, uh, and a nice milled clip. So, uh, very, very high quality uh, construction here. They definitely have gone out of their way to do some extra things. The weight here is coming in at 4.87 ounces. So definitely a little heavier than some people might expect. I'm gonna guess the balance is, it's a little butt heavy. Yeah, it is, just a little bit, but not bad. It's, uh, you know, eight inches, three and a half inch blade. 4.8 ounces, not anything absolutely crazy. Won't bother the, I, I would assume the majority of people. It didn't bother me while I was carrying it. I, I plan to continue to carry this, by the way. Um, it didn't bother me, uh, but it depends on what you were carrying. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm gonna get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. So this one, unless I'm mistaken, yeah, it did. Just like other um, uh, Maxace knives, comes with a crap load of additional hardware, which is awesome. There's a lot of value to that. Seriously, think about how many headaches and issues this solves for how many people, right? How much money that saves people um, versus like sending it in or having to like email some freaking whatever who may not respond. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. So that's something to consider as well. Uh, but the uh, hardware that is attached to the knife, um, where are we going? I think it's all T8. Let's take a look here. The pivot's actually a little bit bigger, which I should have known. The uh, this is an integrity screw, but it's also for the stop pin. We've got. Uh, handle screws back here and then the pocket clip screw might be a T6 which is not a big deal but I think the pivot screw is actually a T10 so let's give that a look and it is so that's nice we have a T10 pivot with T8 body screws uh, very simple construction this should not be difficult to take apart minimal hardware I think we're good to go there let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness real quick Blade stock thickness is coming in at 150, it says 153, it's probably 155 thousandths, which is honestly thicker than I would have thought. I think it would have been probably better, more beneficial with this knife to be a bit thinner, but okay, it is what it is, right? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes. This is a really nice looking knife. It is very classy and not in a, I've seen this a million times, it's very boring folding steak knife kind of way. No, Max has managed to make something that is very stylish and streamlined, right? Um, and, you know, kind of a, a good safe profile that's going to appeal to a lot of people, but they still managed to give it some character. Little things like the little... It's almost like they milled a belly button into it or like a coin slot, <laughs> but it looks nice, right? The inlay work is phenomenal. I mean, just absolutely perfect. The fact that we have ZDP, I don't know about you guys, but I, you know, it's like I've been saying for years, I'm sick of M390, absolutely sick of it. It's fine. It's a great steal. I'm just sick of it being on every single knife because every company's like, this is what people want. So here it is, right? Now we've got ZDP, Sand My ZDP on this, which makes it really, really interesting. Um, I have a, you guys know that I have a Rockstead that I use and carry that no longer has a tip because I broke it on accident. Um, ZDP gets super duper hard or is capable of getting incredibly hard versus other steels in its caliber because of its composition. It is beneficial for ZDP, despite me having broken the tip on mine and you know, I was abusing it. I was doing things that are dumb. Um, you shouldn't do with a knife, right? But the benefit of ZDP is that it can um, get really hard and um, maintain the same or better toughness than a lot of other steels in its caliber while um, at the same time having outrageous 
uh, edge retention performance or performance in the edge retention department, which is certainly true of that rock set. The rock set I have is <laughs> stunning. It is incredible how long the edge is. I, it, that, that thing laughs at properly heated uh, M390 or properly heat treated M390. I know a lot of the edge performance comes from the fact that that's mirror polished and it's got a convex grind and it's, it's a zero edge and blah, 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 right? Uh, but ZDP will perform very, very, very well when it is heat treated really high. The heat treatment on this, from everything that I read, and I read from like eight or nine different sources, that ZDP is typically hardened between 64 and 68. Obviously, you're going to get better edge retention and lower toughness the higher you go. So what's the range here? 64 to 66, which is, yeah, I kind of look at it as like what, you know, a lot of production companies do with M390. They go 59 to 61. 59 is, nah, I don't know, really, that's not really where I want it to be. 60 is okay, and 61 is pretty good, right? That's kind of how I look at it with ZDP. 64 is, bleh, why? You know, at that point, you might as well be going with a different composition. 64 is okay, and six, or I'm sorry, 65 is okay, and 66 is pretty good, right? I wish that it was on the upper end. Had they gone 65, 67, I think that would have been a bit better, but okay, right? I can't complain too much. It's still going to perform really, really well, even on the lower end. Um, but, you know, there's a 66% chance that you'll get something anywhere from, you know, uh, okay to pretty good. Um, so that's just where it's at. I didn't really know. I mean, I don't use any of these knives hard enough to be able to definitively say. I always try to remind people of that. But just carrying it around and using it like a regular pocket knife, the edge has shrugged off everything. And this has gone through quite a bit of cardboard Quite a bit of general packaging, nothing too crazy, just what I normally use a knife for, and nothing. I've noticed absolutely nothing. On some blades, I have noticed that even that will like either chip it or dull the edge really, really quickly, which makes me question the um, heat treatment, but not on this. This seems to be doing just fine, and I've probably had it in the pocket, oh, I don't know, maybe for seven or eight different days uh, since I got it. So it's seen a fair bit of use. But nothing insane. I um, that, I just wanted to share with you guys the information on the heat treatment there. How comfortable is it? Boy, it's really comfortable. Um, in fact, every time I get this out, I kind of marvel at how good it looks and how comfortable it is. There's quite a bit of material in the hand. Uh, enough extra. That's what separates this from the Sebenza for me. The Sebenza just feels a, a lot smaller. Um, and there's just not a whole lot. A lot of people always ask me why I don't have a Sebenz in my collection because it's one of the, you know, Holy Trinity knives. It's just kind of boring. I'm just really not into it. I recognize that it's a great, you know, tool, but I, I appreciate um, I, other elements, right? I just, I like things, I, I like more in terms of the aesthetics and the design or the aesthetic and the design. And this is that more for me. And I'm not just talking about thicker materials. It does fill the hand in a very satisfying way, but there's just more going on and it, it just looks a little bit better. Um, the edges are very nicely chamfered down. There's not really anything that makes me feel like I'm completely and totally locked in. I appreciate this little area right here. It's not a choil, but you can choke up a little bit, kind of safely, right? I mean, there's a little bit of a ramp there. You're not gonna immediately run your finger into the edge, but you can comfortably choke up. Um, the jimping is absolutely useless. Why, Max says, why even do this? If you guys are gonna do jimping, do jimping, right? Uh, I mean, I actually could uh, refer to the Sebenza for uh, better jimping. This, the jimping on the Sebenza is functional. Uh, it looks good and it's, you know, beneficial. It's utilitarian. This is nothing. These are just lines that you just slip off of immediately. Uh, we need jimping and we need it out to about here on a knife like this. This is uh, not a horribly expensive knife. People absolutely, despite what some people think, like if you're new to the knife world, you will absolutely 100% refuse to believe that anybody on this earth carries and uses a pocket knife that costs more than $100. And you are comically mistaken. There are tons of people who carry expensive, right, expensive knives. Um, I regularly carry knives that cost, you know, hundreds of dollars, and I'm not trying to flex it, just the way that it is. It's the natural progression of the ladder, right? The more knives you get, the more knives you buy that are expensive, right? And then the more knives you have that are expensive, the more likely you are to use those knives. Um, so uh, this is a knife considering the build and, you know, 
the part of the knife roll that, that it caters to, uh, the phosphor bronze washers, the price, this is a knife that's going to be used. And people who use their knives, right, generally, if they're going to take them out and use them consistently, um, they, they like a little bit of jimping, right? Not everybody, but uh, this knife definitely should have had better jimping. It just doesn't, this is, makes no sense. This is just useless. Uh, so uh, I think that it could be improved on uh, there. But otherwise, good. And you can still put your thumb up here, right? If you're going to do some of that detail work or whatever, right? Um, it's nice. The blade is just phenomenal. And the edge, while not the thinnest behind the edge, uh, you know, like the actual cutting edge is not the thinnest behind the edge. Uh, it does slice just magnificently. The, um, the finish on it is great. Even after using it a little bit, right, it's gone through some cardboard. And it's just fine. In fact, I don't think, I didn't even manage to put a nick in it. <laughs> I mean, Oh, it's not, it, it doesn't want to bite as readily as, you, as some people might assume, but it will, it will absolutely, you know, create the little curly cues and things like that after just a little bit of use. But no, the, the edge feels fine. I would imagine, you know, all I've ever had to do with my rock set is just drop it. Um, obviously, if you run into a staple or something, that's not going to fix the issue, but um, the edge seems to be fine. I really, really, really like the finish on this blade. It's like a hand rub satin, but with an extra bit of polish, and it looks gorgeous. That is really nice. Definitely a step up from the typical and definitely overdone belt satin finish barf. I am so tired of that. Tumbled finishes. I'm also kind of, you know, sick of just like a generic tumbled finish. It's always nice if you get a little bit of extra polish, extra reflectivity. But, you know, better yet, I like to see finishes that we don't normally see. And a higher reflectivity, what I'm assuming is hand rub satin finish, looks really nice. This line here, of course, that's where the, uh, the, the core of ZDP is exposed. Looks really cool. Um, or, you know, if you're like new to knives or you're just not somebody who's super duper observant, then maybe, you know, people might not catch that. But to people who know what it is or just really into knives in general, uh, will probably like it. I, I just think it looks really nice. It says Max Ace on one side. Um, the logo is gigantic and definitely kind of takes away from the overall aesthetic presentation of this knife. Max Ace, I think you guys could probably calm down on this. I think we could make this a lot smaller because this is the type of knife that people really want to look at. In fact, in general, I think that uh, Max Ace knives, their billboarding is just a little bit too big. Um, that's not what people want to look at. They want to look at the knife. And then on the other side, it says Peregrine ZDP 189, which is fine, but it, again, could be a little bit smaller. Uh, or just not, you know, they could put ZDP right here. You don't need to put the name of the knife on the knife. It's like tattooing your own name on your forehead. It's just a weird thing to do. Uh, and then Max Ace could just be not on there at all. You could put it on the spine of the blade or somewhere where people don't have to look at it because this would look way better without capitalized Max Ace screaming at you, right? Uh, or just this little logo right here would be fine. Um, but that's just me being super duper nitpicky. A little bit of a pivot collar there, which is nice, nice little touch. Uh, nothing too crazy going on with a backspacer, and there is absolutely no lanyard hole, which I know the vast majority of you don't care about. Uh, but if you are into lanyards, sorry, there's no lanyard thing. Um, I think it's always a good idea, you know, even though as, as much as I crack jokes, you could just put a bar in here, right? Even for the seven or so people left on earth who like lanyards, just put a bar in there so they can put one on there. Again, with the pocket clip, the design looks really, really nice. I love how they've carved this sort of channel out of the middle of it and then chamfered the edges. Just a really nice clip. The only issue I had is that the bill is almost too shallow. This is not going to catch anything and bend out, but I was always having to fight my pants. We got to give enough room for the seam of your pocket to get underneath there. If you're wearing like the thinnest pant material, like, you know, like workout shorts, uh, maybe you can slide in under there. Maybe you wear wax paper pants, right? Then no problem. But for everybody else, it's a little bit of a fight. So the bill needs to, that, that ramp underneath needs to come up slightly more, right? Maybe less gradual uh, so that that way it can ramp up over your pocket. But it's fine. 
And I think most importantly, it does not create any type of hotspot whatsoever, which is really, really nice. Really wish they had found a way to accommodate for lefties, but they did not at all. I mean, this knife is a gigantic F you to lefties. They just do not care. Um, so I just, I don't know. I think it's a good idea to not miss out on that, you know, 10% of the population might be smart to cater to them at least a little bit. Um, but anyways, uh, access to the lock bar also, by the way, is very good because it's carved out on this side and this side is a little bit higher. Really, really nice. Like that a lot. The action is very, it's, it's hydraulic, kind of like a Sabenza, but not quite as tight, which is really nice. You can easily flick this thing right out of the box and it feels good. The detent is also tuned nicely. Uh, considering we have uh, phosphor bronze washers and not a fall shut bearing action, right? So it's a nice click. The blade is centered. And also we have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. <clears throat> lock up on this guy. Let's go ahead and fire it out, you know, nice and hard so we can see. Lock up is coming in at something like 25% or so. The stop pin is located in its traditional position with a little tiny bit of shouldering. There is no blade play up, down, left, or right. Nothing at all. No lock stick, no pivot lash. Very, um, very Max Ace. Like, Max Ace is really just nailing things down. Their, their execution is amazing. Um, this knife has some weird corks, but nothing that should be a deal breaker. Um, the thumb studs are a little annoying, right? Lefties, they just don't care at all. Um, the, uh, the action's gonna be a little bit tight for, you know, people who are expecting, like, bearing action in this, um, territory. And I feel like they could have gotten the ZDP a little bit higher, right? Um, but it's fine. It's not like they're going 61. It's not like they were like, ah, nobody will notice. Run it the same as M390. Nah, they gave it a little more, right? They gave it, they tried to give it a, you know, at least a little bit of a ZDP treatment here. And they are within the normal range, right? This for everything that I've read. I was really surprised to see that normal was all the way down to 64. But I just didn't know enough about GDP. Uh, so, yeah, they are technically within that normal range. Um, I think the best thing about this knife is the price. I mean, all the little quirky things considered, they really max this out. I mean, we have carbon fiber inlays. Really nice looking titanium. Full milled backspacer, milled clip, San Mai ZDP that's even got an extra spicy little polish on it. 288 bucks. That is phenomenal. I know some people who might be new are thinking $288 for a pocket knife. Listen, I get it. The knife world is confusing, right? You want to seek out any and all information about how things are priced and why they are the way that they are. You can get that all from my channel or you can go around and, you know, watch a bajillion videos that have been on YouTube for decades. This topic has been thoroughly covered. And while people slightly disagree, sometimes there is kind of a general consensus when it comes to pricing by tier, considering uh, country of origin. Uh, but if you want to skip all that, let me tell you, um, in terms of competition, this thing is holy crap. That is a really nice, really good price. Getting exactly this from other, even other Chinese companies, I would venture to guess that you're going to pay an extra 50 to 75 on average. I think that, uh, 288 for the Peregrine is amazing. Um, it is very, very Sabenza like, right? I mean, it is, but it's still doing its own thing. There's not enough here for me to scream copy. It just has a similar knifey profile, right? If we're going to say the profile is a copy, holy crap. Let me tell you about the thousands of other knives that have copied the Sabenza, right? That's, we're pretending that the Sabenza, of course, is the only knife that ever existed with that profile until after it was popular, which is not the case, right? So let's, we, we, you know, let's be careful about what we say there. Um, but um, yeah, overall, uh, honestly, I'm pretty impressed with it. I think this is a really nice knife. And I like that Max Ace is saying like, hey, listen, like we do make a lot of really wild and crazy, like nutter butter stuff, but we also know how to make a beautiful and practical folding knife with really, really nice materials. So it's cool that Max Ace, uh, you know, will take risks and do wild and crazy things, 
but also make things that cater to people who are enthusiasts and people who actually carry and use knives, right? Um, I, I think this is pretty cool. This is going to go on my recommended knives playlist. I, I think it's really nice. For 288 it's it's a pretty good knife. I, there are, There's definitely room for improvement, but as it sits, it, it's really good. Boy, this was a lengthy review. Um, that's going to be pretty much it for me today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.